Hop in to our next match here. We are on Royal Blood for the start of this best of three. Spawning in the lower left, left, the lower left hand corner. I don't know what accent that is. It is Gumiho representing the Korean Terrence in today's bracket. His opponent in the upper right hand corner in the blue representing uh, the European Zerks. It's Wayne. And if you're like, who the hell is Wayne? You may be more familiar with Wayne as Ratata. And if you're slightly familiar with Ratata, you might remember Wayne as Vanya. Vanya, definitely the most common name uh, that this player went by for a very long time. Changed it to Ratata for a good bit. And just as we all got used to Ratata, boom. Here we go, Wayne. So, I, I'll be honest. I, I'm not a. I'm not in love with Wayne. It's not my favorite. I didn't love Ratatat either. Honestly, I thought Vanya was a much stronger name. I think Vanya is like a solid name, you know. Uncle Vanya, classic. It's a play by Anton Chekhov. But, you know, he's looking for his identity. Went for the name change maybe after Oliveira won the World Championships. Got inspired. Guya's going for the two racks Reaper. I kind of like that they're not both in the wall. Uh, usually on this map, I do see them both in the wall. It leaves the add-ons very vulnerable. The wall gets really weird and wonky. In this case, Gumio's not committing as much of his tech to this wall, so this could just be a reactor. Then this one could be the tech lab, keep Stim safe, things like that. I'm really surprised that Reaper didn't just kill that drone. That Reaper just drove right by that drone. Could absolutely have just gotten the kill. Doesn't decide to mess with it. Instead, goes straight into the base. It is going to allow Wayne to just take this. It's actually really, really nice for Wayne. Who, we kind of talked about it last game, right, with, with young Yakov. The European Zergs just aren't nearly as familiar with this kind of opening. I don't think a lot of European Terrans play this kind of opening on the ladder over there with the two racks Reaper. Now, if you're on Korea, you're gonna face it almost every single ZVT. But in Europe, it's just not the case. And it's, you gotta deal with it a very specific way and Wayne just might not be as familiar with how to deal with it as those Korean Zergs. He's a very strong Zerg player, but getting used to a new kind of build is very difficult. And this hatchery is gonna be forced to be canceled. And this, is actually the reason I think why Gumiho left that let that drone live. Because he knew he could force the cancel. And that's this is just a brutal situation now for Wayne, who invested all that money into it, but was still forced to cancel. Now Gumiho does not go down here and try to do the same thing to this one. I don't think he realized that there was already a hatchery being Base built down there. I think Wayne actually handles that quite nicely. This is a weird choice to me. Gumiho decides to put the more vulnerable add-on out here and all the reapers are going to go down trying to defend oh my god he doesn't get the wall closed wayne gets right on in gumio gonna lose all of his marines the scv is forced to be pulled but they do not win the fight either and gg and just like that gumio not focused for a second miss micros doesn't get the wall closed and Wayne takes game number one. Oh my God. Here I am talking about how he's not used to it and Gumiho gets to cancel on the hatchery and it's so good for him. And then there he goes running those links right on in. Goddamn. Well, hopefully game two goes better for our Terran. Would love to get a game three. Sick victory there for Wayne, but maybe not the most satisfying of victories. Winning off of a, uh, a crucial mistake of your opponent. But I'm sure he's not over here complaining about being up one 
Zero. Spawning in the lower right hand corner of Babylon. It's Wayne. Last name Wayne, first name Bruce. His opponent in the upper left hand corner is, of course, the Gumi Ho, the Gumi God. But now has to win the next two in a row to avoid falling to this Zerg player. Oh, I'm just going to watch chat as this happens. The nice part about the two minute delay is I can enjoy this happening in real time with you guys. Whew. Yikes, dude, yikes. I'm sorry, Wayne, what is this? You're supposed to, it's supposed to be a hatch, hatchery here. Uh, hello? Hello? Wayne just going ahead, mining some gas, getting up his spawning pool, you know, normal stuff. Then putting down the hatch quite a bit later. Gumio just doing a Reaper expand here. and I'm getting a little worried for Gumi because I feel like Wayne's build is designed to exploit a Reaper expand. And, you know, I feel like against a two racks Reaper, this isn't as good. But you can't two racks Reaper on this map in this position as a Terran. I think you can, but it's like really hard. Your add-ons again are gonna be very exposed. Getting that wall to work is really weird. But, uh, I mean, imagine if there was a wall right now because there are six lings heading across the map. Reaper is going to get over here and see that the hatch is not done yet. He immediately leaves. There's a Bane Nest on the way. Wayne is not just poking with some lings. Wayne has 15 drones, and Wayne's not going to have more drones. Lings are going to get in here, try to stall out this base, but it looks like he's going to let the base finish. There are a couple Marines coming out. Factory is almost done. Reaper on the other side does dive in. Does it get to see the Bane Nest? No, it doesn't. Instead, getting pushed away, likely by the Queens. Oh, this is actually very bad for Gumiho right now. Six Banelings are morphing. The Reaper doesn't come home. It just kind of chills outside. Oh, my God. And these Banelings are going to push in. The Lings get the surround on the Reaper. It goes down. No grenade happening here. And the Banelings smash through the depots. The Marines find a nice position, but this bunker isn't done yet. The Hellion is about to pop. Ooh, the Baneling gonna pop on those SCVs, damaging them pretty severely. Four of them go down right away. More Lings on the way behind this. This natural base is done for sure. Can the Hellion hold on its own? Not really. Oh my God, it doesn't even get a second shot off. The SCVs gotta get pulled out again. Now the bunker will finish, but there's no Marines to go in it just yet. Gumio's just got a fight with the SCVs. Wayne's only on 15. The Banelings come back in and damage even more SCVs. So these ones on the low ground will go down in a flash. Finally, one Marine in this bunker. The Hellion, though, gets trapped again. Gumio with some uncharacteristic Miss Micro here and down to 12 workers. Of course, he has mules, but these SCVs need to go hang out by the bunker, I think. Which means the Lings are just gonna be able to get in. Other Hellion can at least chase these last few lings down. Aggro them over to the bunker. Try to get some damage done, but another SCV falls. Gumio down to seven workers. I, oh, there's more lings coming. The Hellion finally trying to clean up these last couple of lings. We'll get them. And Wayne's going to have to leave. But look at this. Wayne did that thing where you drone up behind it. And he's on 26 workers. I don't think there's any more lings out. No, oh, there's two. They're running around. The queens are just going to have to defend. Right now, it is just one queen. And Wayne starts up a lair in the natural. He's just going straight for that tech. Now, Gumio's in an abysmal spot. This is an excellent, excellent start for Wayne. But it is Gumiho. He's got double mule. He's got double SCV production. Can he somehow pull this back? 
Wayne is working on some tech right now and just droning. It's droning in tech out of Wayne. Is there a way for Gumio to take advantage of that? He's going to have three Hellions, three Marines, and a Medivac. I think there's a possibility here. He's also going to uh, salvage that bunker. Do the Hellions stay at home? There's just, there's nothing out for Wayne. So I feel like those Hellions could try to get drone damage done. But of course, he's afraid of Ling's counterattacking in. He doesn't know what's going on on the other side of the map. We can see there's no danger of Ling's counterattacking in because right now there's still just the two Lings. Two more are on the way and that that's it. Those, those Lings aren't doing anything. But the Hellions are just going to hold the front. Gumio back up to 19, 20 workers. And Wayne's going for a two-base Muta play. Now these Marines are going to have to run away. One of the Marines even going down. Very painful for Gumio. Any loss at this point is just, just brutal. But here's the amazing thing about going for that lair in the natural is Gumiho. He doesn't know about it. He hasn't seen the natural. He sees no third base. And I guess it's good those Hellions stayed at home because the Lings did try to come in. But right now, Gumio, he's so in the dark. He just has, he has nothing, he has no information whatsoever. He's seen one gas, and I think that, I think that was just now, but like, he has no information on what's coming his way. And he's going to go for a Hellbat attack. Guys, Hellbats do not shoot up. And Gumio, he's got a handful of Marines out right now. There's no engineering bay. Honestly, his best bet would be to build like a Widow Mine or two. But there's five Mutas on the way. And Gumio is not prepared for this at all. Wayne is, is setting up for a victory in game two. I, I don't see how Gumio defends this at all. Nine Mutas now coming out. The two base Muta play here is just so excellent. I think Gumiho is thinking maybe it was just over droning behind this. He's going to spot these these mutas. He's got to be so sad. There, there's nothing back at home to defend these mutas. So if they go across the map, the mutas do have to stay home. Oh my god, but the marines get just bashed. That's it. That's GG. As the banelings come in and close the game out, Wayne with the bane bust opener against Kumiho. I cannot believe it. What a game from Wayne. Game one, very unfortunate for Gumiho. Just a bit of mishandling there. One of those situations. Uh, one of those situations, kind of like we were talking about earlier. Very common for Protoss, but as we see, can certainly happen to Terran. And, uh... Yeah, very unfortunate for Gumiho. Game two, just what a strat out of Wayne. Pulling that one out of his pants. And Gumiho just, he wasn't prepared for that kind of build. That's beautiful. Going into the two-base Muta after it too. Huge brain. Huge brain.